I'm going to spend the next couple of minutes making fun of your favorite players. If you're a pussy Lee right now, actually, don't. I like it when you're mad. Stay. Hold up. I forgot this player was even in the league. Usually some I went from possible Winston Prodigy to just being fucking average. I'd never seen a player so thoroughly hyped up before joining the league, just to decay over time and not improve at all, but be somehow guaranteed a contract and starting spot each fucking year. Gushue puts up Ben best numbers, but somehow gets Carpe contracts and leverage. Hold up. Carpe can top every single hit scan statistic and continue to be a top 3 hit scan of all time, but that will never change the fact that this loser has not won a single thing. The amount of second place finishes I've seen out of this player is absurd. It doesn't matter if he's trying to make a wish kids or a literal super team, Carpe will never win a fucking title and will guaranteed fail to meet the occasion in a playoff scenario. Carpe will go down as one of the greatest chokers to ever touch this game and have to accept the fact that Nico GDH has more rings than him. Hold up. Despite the crippling caffeine addiction and being on a garbage justice team, Corey was pretty talented at his peak, but I have a sneaking suspicion he would have been quite the fall off if Valorant didn't release. Also, he might have the worst Zarya I've ever seen in Overwatch League. Hold up. Super may have all the accolades and stage wins, but just a quick reminder, he'd be nothing if he didn't have the literal best coach in the world on his team. This kid was a bum before Krusty, and even now, he's gonna shit his pants if he gets asked to play Winston in Overwatch 2. Trust me. Hold up. Yes, the most overrated flex DPS player to walk the planet. A lot of this video will be blatant trolling, but not this. I have never seen a player whose results and performance are so disconnected from the actual praise they get. It's as if performance in Season 1 Finals have burned into people's retinas and they cannot fathom the idea that any other player, like, you know, Flutter, is actually better at the game than Profit. This fucker is the Eli Manning of Overwatch League in the sense that people are willing to ignore how he played the majority of his career because he did pretty good in two playoff runs. Like wow congrats, you won a playoffs against a choking NYX on another team that had Poco and Neptuno. You truly are the GOAT. Besides that, in stage 1 finals of the inaugural season, he literally hasn't won anything. The only other true highlight of his career is performance in the 2020 grand finals, but other than that, he's just a good player. That's it, a good player. Also, when he wasn't injured, Birdwing was 100% the better player in this duo. People attributing GOAT status to Jester's daddy over here is the craziest thing I have ever seen because there's nothing that distinguishes him from any other player and making him worthy of that title. Hold up. Oh man, does it pain me to bully one of my favorite players, but it is what it is. Space is proof that if you're an American player now, all you really need to do is be average and you'll get the pass. Seriously, I don't think he has ever reached the peak he did in Season 1, but strangely he is still rated as a good tank. No, seriously. Each year, he gets worse and worse, but somehow, we still excuse him and like say he's a good tank. I don't know where this comes from. Hold up. You know, I don't feel like roasting Dante. He's on Houston. At this point, it's just pity from me. Hold up. Oh, I'm so sorry about that. Give me a moment, guys. Yeah, sorry about that. Andy Miller called up. He was like trying to bribe me. He didn't want me to give you guys a reality check, but I, I have to do it, you know? Vio Poop is simultaneously one of the best and worst things to ever happen to the Shock. When he's on Bap and Zen, you could just auto win your match, but if the meta does not revolve around those two heroes, oh man, you are out of fucking luck. This dude's Ana is genuinely fucking horrific, to the point where Krusty just decided to bench him for Architect on more than one occasion. He also gave us some hilarious DPS performances in recent memory. Owl Season 4 was truly a trip, so I have to thank Violet for that. I also really, um, I really love the fact that he makes shitters like PvP irate, so, you know what, I, I was meant to roast him here, but like, I can't. Violet is my hero. Anyone who flames PvP is my hero. Hold up. It's hard to discredit Jonak because of the fact that he single-handedly changed an entire perspective on a hero and arguably played a large responsibility in getting that hero nerfed, but I'm an asshole so I don't care. Jonak's legacy is propped up by having an entire team play around him and taking all the credit for what was often a mercy damage boost in tanks sacrificing themselves to 12 satanic aliens. Jonak put up monster zen and honest stats, but if you asked him to throw a Baptiste lamp, Oh man, you're in for pain and respawn time. 
Hold up. SPP had a phenomenal career before Overwatch League. Then Overwatch League happened, then he became a perma tracer one trick, but he wasn't even good enough for that, so he was eventually not even top 5 on that hero, and already a bad player by season 2. And his only lifeline was being the fact that he was a fan favorite, who any team would kill to sign, even with the awareness that he would be a bench seat. He is pretty handsome though, he can marry any of my 7 daughters. Hold up. If I'm being real with you, I don't know how I'm gonna go about shitting on a guy who has arguably been the best and most consistent flex DPS to ever touch the game, but uh, I can try. A big asterisk on Fleta's success has to be the fact that he played in APAC. APAC has had quite a few moments in which it was basically full of remote controlled AI and Make-A-Wish kids. Season 3 Fleta was in a division where the second highest win team had 10 wins below his. And it was the charge. His competition was the likes of the Spark, Charge, and the NYXL. Meanwhile, the NA had Mayhem, Eternal, and two super teams in Shock and Fusion. Hey Flutter, you bum, how about you play against some real teams, buddy? Hold up. I think it says a lot when the most to come out of your legacy in Overwatch is a single out of context ranked screenshot where you make a declaration of your sexual escapades to a bunch of GM teenagers who probably don't even know what a vagina looks like. You know, Baby Bay was pretty bad and mediocre most of his career as a head scan. It actually ended up leaving the league when he was starting to be not shit. Tragic. Also, he's short. That's not relevant, but I just wanted to say it for absolutely no reason. Hold up. Oh, I forgot about this guy. Jay Hong. He's just the SBB of support players. <laughs> One trick who was pretty good before Al, who proceeded to get lapped within two years. What more do I even say about him? Um, he's really respectful towards women. I rank him very high in my um pro esports women respect their tier list. You know, yeah. Hold up. Kriv might unironically be the worst non-French player on this list, and the fact. We only got this guy out of competitive play last year is fucking insane. This man managed to make an entire OWL career out of one good honest sleep and collected money off teams for multiple years. This fucker is my favorite scammer in OWL. And the fact anyone has ever had him ranked as anything above 15th place for flex supports is horrifying. Career fanboys are perhaps the most delusional group of humans to walk this planet. Hold up. And to close it out, I would dedicate the rest of this video to French players. My favorite players in Overwatch. There's a lot of things to say about Poco, besides the fact that he sucks. But what really gets me is the fact that he is still playing in Overwatch. Listen, I know Spitfire is an all EU team, but is this the best talent Europe had? Did you need him this badly? Brother in Christ, there's just no way the best tank you could get was Poco, the guy who can't even compete with Hotba. Ben Best may be a mediocre tank who got carried by 9k for one season, but he is really handsome, so I don't give a fuck. Ben Goat, have my children. Now. Wow. The fact this nigga Nico GDH got a ring before Carpe just kind of shows how unfair and corrupt this world truly is.